Hi everyone, I have the Essie 2016 winter colors for you guys today. The last video that I posted was my um, swatch my stash video, but the video before that was actually like a what I'm loving video um, for this time of year. And I showed you guys in that video that I had received the SE 2016 colors and I wanted to get them up as soon as possible for you guys. It came super cute packaged in this box and it was all tied up with a bow and you probably saw that in the last video. Um, but inside was a little card that says, Essie, slip on your tallest heels and get ready to boa. We're getting groovy in celebration of NT Essie's winter shades. It says, spread the hashtag Essie love this season. And it has their Instagram and Snapchat info on the bottom of this card. And it has a little promotional photo of a peace sign with some gold polish dripping down it. There are six colors in the collection and I believe they're actually already available to purchase. You can at least purchase them already on the SE website. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of an insight as to what this collection is about. Um, on the website it says in quotes, I'm into love, peace, and getting groovy. And that's, you know, signed by SE. If you scroll down a little bit on the page, there's a little paragraph that has like a little promotional info in it as well. It says, catch a double decker bus to swing 60s London. Slip on your tallest heels because this party on a platform is ready to boa. Relax and go with the flowy as you and your satin sister make the scene at the coolest clubs. What do you think about getting groovy, baby? Oh, behave. Um, and yeah, I did not realize until like five minutes before I, um, film this video that actually Rebecca Minkoff is, um, an SE global color director and she actually edited the colors in this collection. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and I wanted to put that out there because some of these colors are very, um, they reminded me a lot of like color combos that you would see in clothing and now it makes total sense um and you guys will see the colors in a second and i thought as a color collection all together the six of the colors actually work really well together individually you wouldn't really necessarily think like hey these are totally winter colors but after swatching all of them i totally looked at them and thought yeah this is actually a really cohesive winter theme um and i thought that they did a really good job and now knowing that rebecca minkoff was an editor for this collection it makes total sense um she has a little editor's note that says when i think of london i dream about what it was like to be there in the swinging 60s it was such a scene such a time of social revolution um and she goes on to say that that sort of era totally inspired these colors so i thought that was very cool again there are six colors in, in this collection they are available for purchase off of the sc website they're nine dollars each on the sc website um i'm assuming that means that they'll be very readily available um, in your local drugstores soon. I haven't seen them yet, but um, when I find out when they're available, I will list it in the description box down below. And then otherwise, I am going to show you the colors. So the first color is called Getting Groovy, and it looks like this. It is a gold shimmery foil color, um, and it is really, it's like, this is the most um, really sort of holiday New Year's sort of color for me in this collection. The next color is called Go With The Flowy, which is a light gray cream with a little bit of a hidden shimmer in it. Um, this one is pretty obviously sort of like a winter color. I feel like grays like this come out a lot in other collections as well during the winter time. This color is called Oh Behave, and this is a shimmery peach color. And this one was the one that kind of threw me off in why it was in this collection but after again after looking at all the colors together and swatching them it did feel very cohesive in terms of um if you thought about it in sort of like a sartorial collection you would see all these colors represented in um like coats and accessories and things like that so after kind of viewing it that way this totally made sense and then the next color is called Party on a Platform, and this is a red with a little bit of a wine mixed in. This is one of the first ones that made me think, huh, this was like a, this is totally like a red wallet or a red handbag or a scarf or a lipstick. This is one of those colors that I would totally see in stores um, during the wintertime clothing wise. 
The next color is called Ready to Boa and this is a shimmery, really rich, warm brown color. This is another color that I feel like would be reflected a lot in like makeup in the winter time in like your smoky eye or even on nails. I feel like this is a color that a lot of people at least pull out in the fall. And then the last color is called Satin Sister and this is a teal cream and this one when I actually swatched them and put them down on the little table in front of me next to Party on a Platform, this these two reminded me a lot of like, honestly, like a British sort of plaid that you would see. Um, not necessarily like the British flag or, you know, a color combination like that, but um, in a like a scarf or an overcoat or... Um, something like that in a color combination like that and that's what made me think these would look totally like clothing pieces um so yeah that is the teal color um i have live swatches of these so i will show you the swatches now this first color is called getting groovy and this is what looks to be a gold shimmer um like a gold foily shimmer it has a pretty decent foil formula i feel like it's not quite as, um, I don't know what the word is, but like aluminum feeling when you're applying it like your standard foil formula. If you guys have ever painted your nails with a foil before, you know it has that sort of gritty, shiny, sort of aluminum type of finish when you do that first coat. This one has a little bit more of a glossy finish, so it's not quite as foiled as some other foiled metallics can be. Um, that's the first coat of Getting Groovy, and you can see it actually covers pretty well. Um, it's definitely going to need a couple of coats, but it's pretty reflective, um, so you know, it's not going to need a ton of coats, and the color is a nice warm toned foiled gold. So I'm painting the second coat of Getting Groovy on right now, and you can see that it gets pretty much fully opaque in the two coats. It adds a little bit of shimmer as well and a little bit of depth, and the color gets a little bit deeper, but not a ton um, with foils. I don't really tend to assume that they would get any more deep in color than you would see in that first coat. It covers, again, pretty much fully in the two coats and was pretty easy to apply. It didn't have any sort of thick formula or super thin formula and is very actually pretty on the nail. It's really pretty opaque and I like that it's a warmer tone of gold. So that is getting groovy. So in terms of dupes, I don't think I have anything that's directly a dupe of this. I do have a gold foil from Orly, but I feel like that's a little bit more cooler toned. This definitely has more of like a Happy New Year type of gold tone to it in that it's a little bit warmer. Um, it's a little bit more like gilded and a little bit more festive of a gold than your sort of cooler toned golds tend to be in this foil formula. So again, this is Getting Groovy from the Winter Collection by Essie. This next color is called Go with the Flowy and this is a very light gray with a shimmer running through it. The shimmer isn't a color like it's not mixed into the polish let's say like a, um, a metallic would be like Aruba Blue by Essie or like that. This is more of like a glass flat, a really 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 micro glass flex shimmer mixed into like a gray cream if that makes any sense. Um, at first coat, you can see it is a little bit patchy, but the color does lay down pretty nicely. Um, I would say this is one of those colors that would really benefit from a base coat because just on its own, on my bare nail, it seems like it needs something a little bit better to stick onto. So that is the first coat of Go With The Flowy. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Go With The Flowy. And this actually adds a lot of opacity to the polish. I was not expecting that, especially from like a light gray color. It is still a little bit patchy. It's not completely um, and fully like evened out, if that. Although the color looks opaque, again, it's not completely evened out at that second coat. 
So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do a third coat because I think it would get too thick, but um, this is a polish that you don't wanna manipulate too much on your nail. You wanna be a little bit more careful with when you paint your nails with this color. Formula-wise, it wasn't entirely the greatest nail polish. It's a very pretty color. It reminds me of a Zoya color that I used to have that was like a light um, gray with a silver glitter in it. I don't own that one anymore, and I actually don't own it for the same sort of formula textural issues that I had with this polish, although it's a very pretty um, and that this one was much easier to work with than that Zoya polish. It has a sort of like gritty texture to it and when you paint your nails you can see it and because of that I feel like it goes patchy or I feel like it clumps up a little bit so it makes it really difficult to get a fully smooth application on your nail unless you're being very very careful. Um, so if you have more time to paint your nails or have um, a little bit more patience with this polish and I think it would be better but um, it's not entirely formula wise my favorite so far. Also if you look close onto your nails there is sort of a bumpy texture to the nail and it's from that shimmer in the nail polish so this is going to need a top coat as well to be fully smoothed over regardless of how patiently you paint your nails with this so it's a little bit more fussy of a nail polish so I would keep that in mind before picking it up. Color wise it is very very pretty though and it's a really nice holiday or winter themed color. So this color is called Oh Behave and this is like a melony peach color with a gold shimmer running through it. Historically I am not one to wear a lot of peaches um, or like orangey melony type of colors. If you guys remember my immense issue with Melon of Troy by OPI. If you're a longtime viewer of mine, you'll know that's like my least favorite nail polish because it just does not look good on me. Um, this color reminds me a lot of that. This has a really beautiful warm golden shimmer running through that sort of peachy melon base, which actually reminds me a lot of just like a summer peach. It's a beautiful color. Um, tone wise I don't love it on my skin tone but at the first coat it applies really pretty it applies really kind of sheer but it has that sort of sheer formula that I feel like builds up pretty well and it dries pretty glossy so I think this is gonna be a really pretty polish um, not on me but on a lot of other people so that's the first coat of Oh Behave I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Oh Behave and again this surprisingly adds a fair amount of opacity to the polish. Um, I don't expect polishes like this to ever go fully opaque in two coats because it has that sheer shimmery formula um, and polishes that are light in tone like this that are not creams also tend to be fairly sheer. Um, but it added a fair amount again of opacity. It made the shimmer stand out a lot more. It made it look a little bit more orange on the nail than I think it looks in the bottle. The bottle looks a little bit more pink. Um, so yeah, I think I am gonna need a third coat though because it's not fully opaque. Um, so yeah, that is two coats of OB Hay. So I'm gonna go in now with the third coat of OB Hay and you can see particularly on my ring finger, it didn't go fully opaque in that second coat. So. A third coat is needed for me to get this fully opaque. If you guys are new to my channel, you'll know that I tend to do thinner coats anyways, so if you are somebody that likes to use thicker coats, you may have gotten a way of doing um, thick coats of nail polish, two thicker coats to get it fully opaque, but I do like the thinner nail polish coats. Um, it's just my preference of application but with three coats it is fully opaque and then it does have a beautiful shine to it. The shimmer is a little bit more orangey again with the extra coats of polish and makes the polish look a little bit more orangey on the nail. Again, this polish is called Oh Behave. This reads a little bit more springtime to me than it does wintertime because of those peachy tones. Um, it is very pretty though and I think on someone else, not necessarily on me. It would be a beautiful polish. It's just not in my preference color wise. 
I would say formula wise it's pretty average for the sheer shimmery nail polish family of colors. Um, it wasn't terribly difficult to work with. It wasn't a super thin formula in which it pooled or it streaked but it wasn't thick so it didn't get gloopy or chunky on the nail when you were trying to get well when I was trying to get that third coat. So um, this is a very pretty color again and I think this would be a beautiful summer pedicure polish. Um, it doesn't really fit in for me in the winter sort of feel but it's a nice nail polish for all of you neutral nail polish lovers out there. This next color is called Party on a Platform and this is a red tone color but it does have a little bit of a like drop of wine or just like pink in it so it's not totally a red cream although I wouldn't expect anything less from Essie than to have some sort of a red color in their collection because they tend to always have a red in their collection. Um, I like that it's a little bit off of your standard red toned or warm toned bright red. It actually has a really nice formula so far as a cream. Um, it's applying very smoothly and very evenly and you can see that the opacity is actually very nice. The color is pretty rich and pretty saturated um, in this first coat. So that is the first coat of Party on a Platform. I'm going to go in now with the second coat of Party on a Platform. This does make the polish fully opaque on the nail. Um, the formula, again, is really nice. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, and it works beautifully on top of itself as well as on top of no base coat. I've been doing my swatches with no base coat just to see how it sticks to natural nail, and it's stuck very, very beautifully onto that natural nail. Um, and the polish is, again, very rich, very pretty and it's a really nice fall color. I think fall reds like this where they're not totally like a primary red or your typical sort of oxblood red are a really nice variation for nail polish collections. So that's two coats of Party on a Platform. So formula wise this is the best one so far. It applied so easy and it was so pretty on the nail um, and it's very very glossy. I love that drop of wine in the color that makes it a little bit more fall and a little bit more cozy and it's a beautiful nail polish. In terms of dupes, I don't think I have anything that's like a direct shade dupe of this, um, but it's because there are so, there are like hundreds of shades of red out there that they're all going to be a little bit different. Um, I would say Malaga Wine from OPI is pretty similar to this, but Malaga Wine is a little bit lighter and a little bit more pink. Um, but on the nail, I know it reads very similar to like a red cream but definitely in person there is just that slight fall tone to it that I am really loving. So this next color is called Ready to Boa and this is sort of like a coffee brown color with a really pretty shimmer running through it. This is another color that reminds me a lot of the fall. It has that shimmery fallen leaves sort of shimmer to it, that really warm and again cozy sort of look. You can see how opaque this is in one coat, so this is I think going to be a really beautiful color to paint your nails. This one, formula wise, doesn't have a thick or thin formula, it's just right, and the color being a dark color covers pretty nicely in that first coat but doesn't go streaky or chunky or anything. So that's one coat of Ready to Boa. I'm going to go in now with the second coat of Ready to Boa and this gets it fully opaque. Um, it does richen up the color a little bit and add a little bit more shimmer and depth. This is an awesome color. I love that they included a dark color in the collection, but it's not your typical dark red or dark purple sort of shimmer. I like that it's a brown tone. So this polish I also really like. I think this had on par formula with um, the red color that I just showed you guys. I love the shimmer in this. It has a very lit from within sort of glowy fall leaves, cozy, warm, brown, delicious, rich shimmer to it. So I'm a super big fan of this color. So this last polish is called Satin Sister and this is a teal cream. At first coat, it does feel a little bit more sheer than the red polish was. That red polish was a little bit more opaque in the first coat than this one was. I feel like Essie has done colors like this before. I want to say in the Go Overboard collection there was a teal cream 
that was pretty similar to this. Um, maybe not exactly the same tone, but very similar. Um, it's not super sheer though, so I think it will build up pretty well. It didn't apply patchy or streaky, or it didn't stick to anything on my natural nail, so that was pretty nice. And that is the first coat of Satin Sister. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Satin Sister. This gets it pretty much fully opaque and makes the color a little bit more blue and a little bit deeper. Sort of like a really deep ocean-y sort of teal color. So that is two coats of Satin Sister by Essie. Formula-wise, this was actually also very, very nice. Um, Color-wise, as a teal nail polish collector, I have a few polishes that are very similar to this. Um, OPI's Ski Teal We Drop, as well as Amazon Amazoff are very similar to this. I would say Ski Teal, Ski Teal We Drop is probably closer, although it is a little bit darker. Um, again, I feel like Essie has done a polish like this before in the Go Overboard collection, if not that collection than in a recent more recent fall collection um, but it's a really nice polish and it's a really beautiful teal and for teal lovers out there if you are looking for a new teal cream polish then this one is a very beautiful one and you should pick it up um, so those are all of the colors from the winter collection so those are all the swatches of the colors and a brief review of each color for me the standouts are these three colors I think these are formula wise the best and um, I just feel like these are the most beautiful colors um, in the collection for me, preference wise. Um, I absolutely loved the formula of Party on a Platform and I loved the color. And again, I just felt like this is such a trendy like handbag, scarf, overcoat, red lip sort of color and it would go beautifully with like winter wear this year. Um, I loved the formula of ready to boa and I loved the way that this looked on the nail and I also really appreciated that they added a brown and not necessarily just your standard vampy cream purple or um you know I really liked that they added this color and then Satin Sister formula wise was also very nice. I love teal so you guys knew probably that I would really like this color. It is very similar again to a lot of teals out there so it may not be completely unique to you guys but it's a very pretty color nonetheless. I did like the gold shimmer. Um, Getting Groovy was it was a nice formula especially for a um, a foil and I liked the warm tone in it. For me, color preference wise, this is just never going to work for me. I'm probably never really going to wear it. Um, it's the color in Obehave. It's the Shimmery Peach. But it had a very nice formula as well. And for people that love these colors, this is totally a color that I think you guys would really love to wear. Um, this is also a color that kind of translates through all seasons because it's so neutral and so wearable. And especially in the summer, I think this would be like a pretty fabulous pedicure color for the right person not for me. Um, the one color that I did have issues with was the color in Go With The Flow. I was actually really looking forward to this because I do love um, just that wintry gray, the crisp, foggy, frosty, like feeling wise frosty, not finish wise frosty gray colors. But um, this one was just a little bit of a disappointment for me formula wise it just it felt really like gritty and chunky on the nail and it wasn't as easy to apply as any of the other ones so I would say if there was one to skip I would skip the gray shimmery one um, so yeah I actually really liked this collection again knowing now that it was curated by Rebecca, Rebecca Minkoff. It totally makes sense. I feel like there are pieces of her handbag line and her clothing lines that I've seen in these shades and it just, um, I think that it really narrowed the focus and the theme of this collection to be pretty cohesive if you thought about it in that way. Um, if you kind of think about it outside of that, would this necessarily be a really typical or expected winter collection? No, because I don't think most companies would put a shimmery peach in a winter collection. Um, the other colors are sort of, um, they're festive enough, like the um, getting groovy is festive enough for New Year's and even for Christmas. I think people would really love wearing a color like this as an accent nail. Um, but I think the strength of this collection is that it is a little bit different. It is different in the combo of there being a teal, a brown, a red, a peach, 
a gray and a gold versus just your standard reds and vampy colors and like a random shimmery color in there for it to be a winter collection. So that is my review and swatch of the SE 2015 or 2016 collection, sorry. Um, if you go to my Instagram, I will have swatches of all of these available so you guys can see them up close. Um, I will link my Instagram down below and also go check out all of Essie's social media. Um, they were super kind and awesome enough to send me this collection. So um, go and check them out on Instagram. If you guys have a Snapchat, follow them on Essie, Lo Essie Loves Snaps. Um, and I believe they also have a YouTube channel. So I'll link all of their social media down below. Um, so you guys should go follow them if you probably already have. But if you haven't, go and follow them on all of their platforms. Um, again, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new to my channel, if you could subscribe, that would totally make my day. I do mostly nail polish videos now. Um, I do a swatch my stash video every Saturday at least. Um, and then I try to sort of weave in other nail polish or beauty videos in between there. Um, I do have a vlog channel if you want to follow for some planner stuff. I have an Etsy sticker shop as well, so if you're curious, um, you guys can go check out my vlog channel and I have a whole video series of plan with me's and um, sticker stuff on that channel. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. And if you guys have any video requests, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you guys soon.